and is not. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start our closing panel. Please join us in the conference hall. Шановні пані і панове, ми розпочинаємо нашу заключну сесію. Просимо долучитися до нас у конференц-залі. Дякую. Please come in. As uh, you will have seen from the previous panel, Ukrainian politics are rather interesting. Uh, so how could you miss this coming session? And we also heard from Jose Manuel Barroso that uh, the coming election next month will be watched closely not only in Ukraine, but outside of Ukraine. So here's your chance to see the candidates lined up. Prošu, zahojte. Dobre, počinajemo. Okay, we'll start now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now, as we begin, I've been asked to tell you that this, the people who we will be hearing from are the candidates of the political parties who are leading in the polls. Okay, that's how they were chosen. And inevitably, when you have five politicians, it's very difficult not to offend someone. So the decision on the speaking order was made in alphabetical order according to the English translation of your name. So that's how the speaking order is decided. I have it down here, so please don't yell at me, okay? Yell at each other. Um, and I will just invite everyone onto the stage. Please sit down, and then we'll make some opening statements, and then we'll have some fun. Uh, we could hardly disagree on this panel more than people did on the previous one. So, okay, here goes. So, first of all, я прошу Віталія Кличка. Всі знають Віталія Кличка. Просимо сісти. Natalia Korolevsku, prosimo de chudova Natalia. Um, I lied to you because I said it was all the leaders of the political parties that are ahead in the polls ahead of the parliamentary elections. There's one important exception. Leonid Danilovich Kuchma has also agreed to participate in the panel. Prosimo. Uh Tihipko. And we've already heard a bit from him, Arseniy Yatsenyuk. Prosimo. Okay, so these are the representatives we're going to hear from. I will give everyone a few minutes to speak. Kožna ljudina je kilka hvilin vystupić. Everyone will have an opportunity to speak about the vision, about the platform. So the first, and I'm very glad that this is our hero beyond Ukraine as well. Vitaly Klitschko is our first speaker. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, to the chance uh, to talk about uh, the election in this panel. Uh, yes, of course, very interesting uh, what we wait of uh, October 29, and yes, of course, is the day after election. In October 28, the day after the election, I expect the UDAR team, what we have to do in uh, election, UDAR team will be very busy defending election result. It's not only the party list, but most important in the single mandate districts. UDAR is running to win and will be fight to the end to protect the votes in our supporters. We promised 
Udar will be show and new standards of politics, sensitivity and openness. But we are feeling the heat from the old waves of uh, political parties. Some region, pro-government representatives put down our billboards, raid our campaign offices, steal our equ equipments and harass our candidates. Police and tax, uh, tax offices open criminal cases against some of our candidates if they do not withdraw from the race. And finally, some Democrats work against us. Even through we agreed not attack each other. A promise Udar has kept. We understand Udar may be a third the old ways in Ukrainian politics. We will begin consultation with the election winners to see if Udar can realize his, his election platform. I see two variants. What happens after election? First, together with Batkivshina and independent candidates, Udar will be form a majority. We will have the opportunity to implement our pro-European platform of anti-corruption, citizen control of governments, and battle against poverty and for implementation of European standards of living. Second, it's uh, worst case. If majority votes uh, with the party of region and the communist, then we go into opposition. In opposition, we will fight for improvement and, living, and the living standards of our people. European democratic values and making sure Ukraine does not stay third world country, but becomes a modern democracy. We will continue to fight for our position in the next election in region and cities. We will not stand down. Foundation for tomorrow is created today. With our election platform and packet of draft law to be introduced in Rada is ready. It includes anti-corruption law to create the independent corruption office, then investigate not just government officials, but also courts, judges, prosecutors, and police. Draft laws that cancel the corrupt act of, th of this government in the area of state's budget tenders. All tenders should be competitive like is a modern world. Our government likes to spend the money. We need to cut the state budget, cut the bureaucracy, limit spending, and decentralize our government into region and cities. Last, we must return self-government to the cities and, yes, of course, capital of Ukraine, Kyiv. Our main task to provide Ukrainians right to choice, right to freedom of choice, right to defend choice, no matter how the situation with the election will develop. Udar will be fighting for democracy and better future for all Ukrainians. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your introduction. I would like to invite Natalia Korolevska to say her introductory words. 
And Vitaly already answered the question what Ukraine is going to look like on the 29th of October after the elections. Could you tell us your vision, how it should look like? Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Viktor Pinchuk and uh, Yalta European Strategy for this opportunity to openly speak on Ukraine the way we see it on the 29th of October. We are all passing the political test. Um, and the test is in maturity of Ukrainian politics and new politicians being prepared to take over the helm of this country. We can demonstrate new qualities of the European policy. This is our chance to show the new quality of life in Ukraine and uh, how, how uh, to the extent to which we'll be uh, able to do that, to the same extent we'll uh, see a different Ukraine with a political competition and uh, people are enjoying the freedom of choice. The right of choice uh, will certainly depend on the new political forces that have no experience in the parliament, no past, no legacy in the parliament, and are prepared to demonstrate new quality at politics. During the previous panel, we listened to the uh, reports of the consequences and casualties of political war that we have to stop in Ukraine because uh, rulers' um, games uh, have no victors, have no winners. If we lose, Ukraine will lose. Political war is destructive for the prospects of Ukraine, is destructive for our colossal potential. And that is why hmm, our task as new political forces is to demonstrate and manifest our ability to maintain constructive dialogue, uh, to compete in politics, not to work for destruction of each other. And uh, uh, we have nothing to talk about with the party of regions or the party of uh, communists either. They are building the country they want to see here. We don't want to live in that country. We have our chance to join our forces and make a new country to be proud of. For that, we have to bring back um, trust in politicians uh, after 20 years of uh, wasted opportunities and unkept promises uh, were devaluated is um, believe of the people in the institutes of the state. And uh, Rehori Namira was right asking, who believes in fair trial? Even in this audience, only two people believed in fair trial. So people in the country don't believe um, in either um, judiciary or bureaucracy in this country. So the economic model in the country is not prepared to shield um, uh, this country against uh, crisis region, uh, poverty, and to maintain fair uh, social standards. So we are not here to compete in uh, political populism. We are here to suggest a real action plan. We are here to show a real picture and a real way out of the situation with existing problems. And for that, we have to get our mandate of trust from the people to implement a new economic model that will bridge the gap between the poor and the wealthy. An economic model to be uh, supported by the middle class, like in all the European world. It is a core, it is a nucleus and driver of reforms. Nucleus of democracy and driver reforms. We have to do everything humanly possible to accumulate our earthens and have a new mission and a new parliament with a new quality of Ukrainian politics to show how we can fight for Ukraine, not against each other. And uh, uh, I'm convinced and I believe that with trust of the people, with the support of civil society, support uh, of the European institution will be able to bring Ukrainian politics back to European values on which um, um, the European uh, democracy rests. Uh, liberty, um, justice, and solidarity. I believe in that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you very much. Now we will uh, hear from
Are you ready to, to speak at the end? Or, or would you like to speak at the end rather than now? Okay then, I agree. Well, I'm not good for being an extra sense, you know. Uh, I, I'm just uh, a fortune teller. Uh, okay, then I, I will ask Srihibko, the Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, uh, Deputy Head of the Party of Regions of Ukraine, please take. Uh, uh, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. I think elections for Ukraine is, a, is an exceptionally important event because when we are talking about democracy primarily, we have to speak about fair and free elections. Uh, when, I, when, when, when discussion uh, started on the first day when we were talking about economy, uh, and I'm sure that election itself is also economic category because market economy in Ukraine uh, cannot be efficient uh, without democracy. For example, combating corruption would be exceptionally difficult, uh, and uh, all reforms and the impact of reforms will be decreased as a result if we don't have democracy. So uh, I, I can say that we are absolutely uh, confident uh, about our position. We follow the rating scores and what I saw uh, on GFK results, we have 7% plus uh, uh, versus uh, united opposition. And I'm sure that if we do not make serious mistakes, and we are not going to do make them before elections, we'll be able to gain the victory. And one other thing that I'm convinced in, I'm, uh, I'm also convinced in this because we have very profound bases that we have laid way before this. I will just quote four figures only, especially for foreign experts. It would be interesting for two and a half years in Ukraine, the average salary increased by 40%, minimum salary increased by 70%, average pension in Ukraine increased by 44%, and minimum pension increased by 53%. At the same time, the Cumulative prices for two and a half years uh, increased only by 14.14 percent. Uh, this year, the figure is going to be even less. And at the same time, we even decreased the deficit of the budget at the constant level, and we were keeping the prices down. What is going to happen after elections? I think here we need to clearly understand that we're going to have very little time we have been talking about economic recession, and uh, it is really, uh, it takes time to, uh, to, to look for the compromise, and we don't have that time. We need to make fast decisions, not to make the economic situations burning. As regards to opposition, we are absolutely prepared for cooperation. I remember the words of Charles de Gaulle, who used to say, the opposition is also France. I can only repeat these words. Opposition is also Ukraine, is Ukraine too, and we are prepared for the constructive dialogue. Thank you. Terrific. So that's good news. Uh, now we're going to hear from Arseniy Yatsenyuk. Uh, he got lucky that his last name puts him on the end. So, Arseniy, prosimo. Pleasure to see you, everyone. So, I would start probably with the reference to the previous panel related to Yulia's case. Look, that's awful and disgusting. We can't shape the future with the European Union not resolving the key impediment on this way, Yulia's case. Yanukovych couldn't hide behind something, not behind the bars, telling that everything is fine. He made the wrong decision. He has to acknowledge it. He has to release Yulia to stop this mess and to move the country forward in terms of European integration. He did it, he is personally responsible, so he has to, to, to change this kind of stuff. Going back to the issue of the elections. Uh, look, these elections are not just about politicians. These elections are not about us. These elections are about the country, about the, the Ukrainian people. These elections could be the bedrock 
for real change in this country. It, I would be delighted uh, having the party for regions out of the power on the 28th of October and having the President Yanukovych out of the office on the 29th of October. Uh, too good to be true. It takes time to implement real changes. In order to shape the future, let's probably concentrate on, on the contemporary political arts. Victor likes contemporary arts, so I will probably start with the current situation. What's up? We have an entirely demolished system of checks and balances. A crackdown on system of checks and balances. Well, they actually introduced a Ukrainian type of system of checks and balances, financial checks and asset balances. <laughs> uh, a crackdown on key democratic values and standards. Absolutely and entirely corrupted political system and rampant corruption in this country. Uh, an enormous will of the incumbent president and close allies to the president to reestablish uh, the country as a joint stock company, having the major stake that belongs to those who are near the president. A huge monopoly, huge monopoly on political and economic issues. That's what we have. What's the agenda for President Yanukovych? It's clear that he wants to preserve the power. It's clear that he wants to grab the majority in a new parliament and to have 300 votes. It's clear that they want probably to eliminate the direct presidential elections and to be president elected in the parliament or to shift to the parliamentary elections and to be the prime minister, to be, to be a never ending president in this country. What's the agenda for opposition? We definitely need to win. We need to take the house. If we get the majority, we get the tool how to change the things. In our agenda, we have the first and most important issue for us is uh, restoring balance of powers in the country. We want the parliament to have the voice in this country, to have the voice of the people. Second, to implement an action plan, starting actually with the DCFTA and political association agreement. When, when one can say, what should we do? I always answer, look guys, if you scrutinize the action plan or DCFTA treaty and political association uh, treaty with the European Union, it says everything. You don't have to invent a bicycle. It's already in it. So we definitely need to sign and ratify DCFTA. We need to tackle corruption. And we need the most important thing I would like to stress on, not just to change the people, not just to change President Yanukovych, well, it's very important, not just to change the party for regions. We have to overhaul the entire system to build up strong democratic institutions. Notwithstanding the fact who's gonna run the country in the nearest future, this or that president, this or that party. The key problem in this country is extremely weak democratic institutions. And this is the only recipe to have real changes in Ukraine. And I strongly believe that we shall deliver it. That's our task, that's our goal, and we're gonna reach it. You're right. Well, now we will hear Leonid Daniluch. Uh, Leonid Daniluch, I'm very interested in your assessment and reaction to the speeches that you heard. And apart from this, I'd like to hear your reactions about what we heard from European and American guests who say that they think that Ukrainian democracy is really under threat and these upcoming October elections will, will manifest whether Ukraine is still a democracy. I'm starting to understand why I was put here among such uh, young and uh, handsome people and beautiful people, because all without exception, uh, those who are in power and in opposition know how to make Ukraine uh, prosperous uh, tomorrow. I do not know, I do not believe it. 
even the simplest analysis of the statistical information of economy uh, tells us the opposite. And uh, yesterday we were warned about that uh, by all the European experts, by very uh, experienced European experts, especially because today the economy is uh, so strangled that it's difficult to breathe. The European Union is going to print money to buy all the debts of all problematic countries, I mean European Bank. And we are happy that we have deflation, that we have zero inflation. And uh, the loans are at 30%. I don't want to sing the song of Wysotsky, and where it is very quiet, but that's the situation that it is when the economy is not receiving loans, it's not developing. Let's look at all the results and we can see clearly. If we today are saying uh, the, uh, we have probably the best indicators, better than European, but we've got the loans for Euro 2012, these are not the money of our budget. And that's borrowings, internal, external, we have tomorrow to pay them back. And that money is not for the development of economy. I understand that we needed uh, Euro 2012. We needed to show to the world that we are Ukrainians. But uh, we uh, did it so we, um, uh, after the Euro 2012, not a single investor came to us. They did not believe us. And the situation is like that today. So if we talk about future elections, which are very soon. I am uh, recollecting the elections of 2004, uh, shivering uh, when I remember, because why everyone was promising uh, uh, golden mines after the elections. Mr. Zarov quoted one figure, I will uh, remind you. Two last, uh, two, two, uh, the last five years of 2004 and 2008, the growth of GDP was 8.4%. Uh, my good friend is here, a well-known economist in the world, and he was writing about us as about European tigers. We were showing the example. Russia, our neighbor, was surprised. Why are you developing? How are you developing? You have no oil, no gas. But I answered how we were developing and why. It was clear. In the next five years, 2005, 2009, the average uh, growth of GDP was 1%. 1%, 8.4 and 1. And uh, if they say that there was the crisis, but in 2004, the GDP growth was 12.1, you know all these figures. And next year, 2005, it uh, dropped to 2.7 or 2.8. Uh, there was nothing uh, happening in the world, no financial crisis. And then we started rolling down, minus 9% in five uh, years of industrial production. And the same with the construction sector, the situation was even worse. The reasons, first, populism, absolutely populism, and I want uh, both the score in power and in opposition. I want to tell you, please stop. Uh, what are you promising? High pensions, high salaries, where are the resources? Uh, soon they will not give us any loans, any credits. We have to start paying back. Non-professionalism. Today we've heard uh, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs that uh, 18,000 uh, specialists uh, who were trained uh, in market uh, situation, we do not understand what market was. We believe that that's like a, a farmer's market. You come, you sell and buy, they were fired. The president said 36,000 and then sometime later, uh, this uh, number was reduced twice. 
So that's where the problems are. And in this situation, again, I would like to mention that whoever wins, try to understand that we have one country, Ukraine. Try to find consensus in main strategic issues. Let's try and define what should be the strategic way of development of Ukraine. Yesterday and today we are arguing. Some people talk about East, others talk about West. We are trying to, uh, someone was talking about love, we are like a bride. We are trying to get married uh, with the European Union, but they don't promise us anything. They tell us, grow up, wait, and uh, Russia says, we are ready to take you as you are. I'm afraid we would grow old before we get married. <laughs> and uh, the world today is so complicated. We do not even know how it will be developing in the future. We just do not know that. Yesterday, they were talking about cyber terrorism. You listen to that, and uh, you are getting shocked. So, my dears, let's be honest to ourselves and to our voters. Because time will come, you will be in parliament, and if in the parliament uh, you believe that your mentality changes, if your love will be different from what you promise now, if you will cooperate with different people, not with who you promise now, then uh, your political career will be not long. You have to be consistent. And the, most, the main thing is what is in your program, you should uh, fight for that. And uh, you understand that those uh, opportunities that you will have, they are not limitless. You uh, uh, should not be trying to convince the parliament to vote for that or that, this or that law. Guys, let's be friends. So listening to Leonid Danilovich speak, I was reminded of the speech last year by Radek Sikorsky, who talked about how a key to Poland's success today was that Poland, through different governments, very different governments, had had from the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union a clear European strategy and that that had been the uniting force and the uniting idea that really kept Poland on a single path, whoever was in power. And we probably have recognized today that this is missing so far in Ukraine, but maybe some sort of uniting idea will arise. I'm going to throw it open now to questions. This is a rare opportunity to speak to some of Ukraine's leading politicians all together. We have about 25 minutes. So please uh, be respectful of everybody else here and be succinct, just ask a question. Uh, and let's start, please. And, and address it to a specific panelist, okay? A question to Arseny and Vitali. I'm Thomas Mola uh, If you win the election, uh, I guess you will try to form a coalition. Uh, you will face a very difficult period with economic constraints. You will have to do all the hard job, but at the same time, uh, another constraint, which is the political constraint uh, with the president, who will have a lot of power. So how will you be able to implement your program in a way that will be politically acceptable and doable in a cohabitation with the president? Okay, that's a very good question. Arsenyi, do you have an answer? Yeah, that's a very good French word, cohabitation. Um, so you can cohabit in France. I believe that sometimes we can do it in Ukraine. This is what Americans say, bipartisanship. But not sure that we can cohabit with the corrupted government. 
and sorry to tell you that with the corrupted president. So, I can do it. And the key idea for us is uh, actually to impeach the president. And I fully realize that this is a very complicated task. But that's, that's what the country needs. Reset. On the issue of uh, the coalitions, look, let's, let's wait and see what's going to be after elections. And whether these elections would be partly or mostly democratic on, or fully undemocratic. Because that's the checkpoint for my country. If these elections are undemocratic, that's going to be, look, even worse than Belarus. Because we don't have our country to be isolated. And there is a huge difference be between Belarus and Ukraine. Because these guys in Ukraine are more, more, I would say, insatiable rather than the Belarusian government. So we definitely need democratic elections. We definitely need the majority in the new parliament. If we have the majority, if we get 226 in the parliament, we can rebalance the power. This is the first step in order to make the real parliament, in order to, to, to have for the parliament a real voice and influence in this political system. Okay, Vitaly, so what's your answer to coalition forming and cohabitation, is it possible? Uh, first of all, we can't change from today to tomorrow. It uh, has to be planned and step by step. It's the first step, and I agree with Arseny, it's very important to make majority in the parliament. It's very important for us. And uh, after that, we can uh, make next step and uh, yeah. and uh, step by step uh, change the uh, government and uh, first of all speaker new speaker from uh, majority democratic majority and after that we can uh, from what uh, will start, start. Uh, uh, to make a government just together it's uh, uh, every step by step from today to tomorrow it's important to doing and uh, i'm more than sure it's a process and uh, we need for that but it's very important step to win clear uh, i agree with arseny fair a clear election and majority is our goal thank you if we, look, if we take the House and if we have the Speaker of the House, it's fine to rebalance the power. But we can't form the government under the auspice of the incumbent president because President Yanukovych misused the constitutional court and actually grabbed the powers that he wasn't elected at. Do you remember this stuff when the constitutional court just easily overruled the constitution in 2010 and uh, uh, the old constitution became a new one? So definitely we can't be nominated as the government by the incumbent president. So the majority and the Speaker of the House is the jump start. Vitaly, you want something to add or is it already? Okay, Pan Roman Špek, please. Thank you. I am not uh, running for the parliament, so I will be speaking in Ukrainian. According to President Kuchma, in the morning we had an exhaustive uh, answer by the Prime Minister what the European can, uh, politics is for him. I would like to hear from every candidate what is European policy for them. You are aspiring to hold important positions, so I would like to hear from you on this. I would be proud if you form a majority, but our Western colleagues asked us to be pragmatic. So let's choose a case study. You have only 200 votes in the parliament. Everybody who represents opposition are only 200. What are your actions in this case? I understand already what you are going to do if you are winners, but if you have not enough uh, deputies, what are your actions? Very, very good, interesting and specific questions. Let's start with Vitaly. First, we hope that we will form 
a majority, but of course there's no guarantee. We'll see the result of the election. If we are in minority, I can tell you one thing. We will fight for democratic principles. Democratic principles, first of all, in Europe, they are, well, the highest value is a human being, their rights and freedoms. Unfortunately, in Ukraine, during the later time, the high value has been reviewed, and many people say that the highest value is money and corruption, because everybody knows that you can buy any official, you can buy any position, any court judgment, and if we don't change these things, we cannot talk about the future of our of our uh, country, period. And what's your European politi policy? Your position in regard of the European Union and your actions. Our policy towards the European Union, I am uh, sure that Europeans want to see at the border of the European Union a stable country both economically and politically, and I am sure that we Ukrainians belong in Europe, and most of Ukrainians say that more than 70 percent of Ukrainians say that Ukraine should develop in European direction, because we are Europeans not only historically and mentally, not only geographically, we have to become Europeans according to the standard of life, but the standards of life depend on the economy and the future politics. So we are politically discussing our next steps. Natalia. First of all, uh, European politics for Ukraine, uh, for uh, Ukrainian uh, policy to become European, to provide our country with opportunities that ha uh, stay untapped and to stop the repressions that we currently have in our country, political and economic repressions for that matter. I did mention that for us it's very important to have uh, justice, uh, freedom and solidarity coming back to Ukraine and we'll be able to prove that we have uh, European politics in this country and to abandon uh, empty declarations. The time is up and we have to switch to constructive things. 200 votes in the parliament, I think, for us it's, uh, it's a global disaster, it's a failure, so we'll use um, um, next six weeks for coordination of our efforts, and if we are able to convey our message to the people and get uh, the credit of trust, then we will exclude the situation, I hope. Um, God forbid that we have a scenario in economy that we were talking about. The majority of opposition after this is the president is impeached. I can only imagine what happens to economy and social standards uh, after this, because this is going to bring us in a year of problems. We are going to see approximately what we've seen in 2009 when we lost within a year 10 percent of uh, the buying capacity of uh, average people. I've been engaged in preparing the association agreement for a year in our government. For us, this European choice is a serious strategy. In order to approach the document that we have agreed with the European Union, we have uh, adopted something like 30 laws that our colleagues who are in opposition now have been talking for about five years, but they have not adopted a single law on communal tariffs or some other stuff. It's uh, very good to talk about European values, but to do something in this respect is much harder. Our main task here is to conduct democratic elections. We have adopted a law which was voted for by the opposition as well. We invited a lot of uh, observers from all kinds of organizations. I think that never before we've seen so many observers in Ukraine. 
we are most of all interested in transparent uh, elections because we see the dynamics that we are satisfied with completely. One thing is to cry out about criminal power and another thing is to work for the provision of social standards. And I think that we will conduct these elections democratically in a democratic way and this will give us a foundation to resume our conversations with the European Union. I think this is a good plan. Uh, I will probably start with the European agenda. What's for me the European agenda? Rule of law, impartial and independent judicial system, and political and economic competitiveness. These are the three pillars, I would say. We have actually the four pillars of the European standards, but let's do it this way. You asked a very important question related to the issue of the outcomes of these elections. Yes, everything could happen. And in case if, if we get less than the majority, what we can do, we can build up very strong opposition. The same happened in 2002. You remember that the opposition was about 124 seats in the parliament. And then opposition gained actually and did a lot in order to win the presidential elections. So in case if we don't have the chance to rebalance the power, we are to control this power. We are to limit the powers of the president as a strong opposition, not giving him any chance to amend the constitution or to rewrite the constitution up to his personal demands. And then we have to be prepared to run for the presidential race and to win the presidential office. We need to take the office back. Very briefly, a comment on the idea of the transition from presidential parliamentary to parliamentary presidential republic again. I think that this is a bad idea at our current stage. And I want to tell you that neither the party of regions nor the president's administration nor the government talk about this today, when the country needs serious structural political reforms to transfer to uh, parliamentary presidential republic means a delay in our progress and we will only lose because of this. So I think this is uh, pure theory. Dear Sergei Leonidovich, it's very well that you think so and we respect your position, but the president Yanukovych does not think so because he knows very well that it is impossible for him to be elected by direct people's vote even if you Sergei Leonidovich uh, become a presidential candidate then uh, uh, Mr. Yanukovych will lose all, even to you it's very good that you speak Ukrainian now it's in order that you understand this better now let's see whether Alexander Kwasniewski knows Ukrainian. The world. Yes, prov uh, After all these years. Uh, I, understand. I tell you, after all these years, I sp understand language more, but Ukrainian less. <laughs> well, I have a question to Mr. Tihipko. Because, uh, of course, we can discuss uh, various scenarios after the election, but uh, looking at the public opinion polls, the most likely scenario is that uh, the party of region has majority, you have president, and you mentioned a very important sentence of the goal, that opposition is France also, opposition is Ukraine also. So my question is, first of all, how you see this possible cooperation with this opposition, having majority, I mean, your party will have majority, Second, I'm sure that you need to have dialogue with the opposition and some kind of cooperation of, with the opposition because uh, all these goals, all these problems connected with economy, social policy, European Union, they need very close uh, contacts with the opposition, even some kind of so-called bipartisan politics. And of course, 
I understand that your sentence, your um, quote of the goal was um, uh, your um, uh, thinking about this, so you are ready to speak with, with uh, opposition. The problem is still with this dialogue, what to do with so-called Timoshenko case. And my question to you is how you see the possibility to encourage ruling party to find some space for the solution, to find some um, uh, form of uh, how to overcome this extremely complicated problem because this problem has many levels. That is a political level, that is a legal level, and that is a psychological level, maybe the most c c complicated. So my question is, first of all, how you imagine this relationships with opposition when you will continue your job in the government? And second, uh, how in this uh, intense dialogue with opposition you can find solution in Timoshenko case? Very serious and tough question, I would say. You know that, of course, if we had a rather constructive or enough constructive uh, talks with opposition on many uh, question issues, then this would be good. So far, we have not had constructive discussions. I would not think too far ahead now. I think that there is our first task, which is to democratically hold the elections. And this is the first position that we should accomplish in Ukraine. The last uh, elections, the European Union and practically the entire world have recognized as democratic. And for us, the major thing now is to make, to take this step then another situation will emerge right after this. We are being harshly criticized now, and I recognize that we have not been able to do quite a lot as quickly as we wanted uh, in this respect. But in a young country, and I want to remind you that we are only 20 years old, so do not expect from us such steps and such standards that European countries were coming to over hundreds of years. So first elections, after this, if we win, we will have the trust of the people and we will have an absolutely different mandate. After this, I think we will be able, we will be ready for constructive discussion. And if we make any mistake and the opposition wins the election, we have to calmly recognize this result and recognize their rights. There was a question about Timoshenko. I said that we should return to this question. In order to talk about this, we have to get a mandate of trust from the people. If this is such a colossal problem, then voters should uh, state their opinion by their vote. Let's listen to the uh, voters. If you allow me, the uh, voters uh, have uh, difficulty to vote for Timoshenko because you do not vote in, the pre in prison. It's very hard to vote for Timoshenko in a cage. We are not 20 years old. We have restored our independence 20 years old. But please tell us, what was the obstacle for you? Because now you have the president. You have unbelievable constitutional rights, uh, unparalleled anywhere in the world. You have, have practically a constitutional majority in the parliament. You control the procurators prosecutor's office, you have control over local councils. What was the obstacle for you that pre prevented you from doing anything for the country over two and a half years except imprisoning Timoshenko? When you, Arseniy Petrovich, speak in such a categoric way, I think there's an adage that there's a very simple answer to any complicated problem, and as a rule, this answer is wrong. Excuse me, but you cannot tell 
uh, us that we did nothing. We came to power in 2009. Shall I remind you of what we witnessed then? The dev the we had uh, at least 22% of the drop in industrial production. Our national currency was devalued. In 2010, we had at least four, from 4 to 11 percent of industrial growth. Then we raised minimal pensions and minimal salaries. This is a colossal work. Yes, we could not overcome the corruption. But Arseniy Petrovich, you were the head, the speaker of the parliament. You had majority. You had the president. You had the cabinet of ministers. Why didn't you do this then? And the answer is, well, I was conducting the pension reform, and a lot of decisions there are unpopular decisions. And quite a lot of bureaucracy now is nonpartisan, and they pose a great resistance to any changes. It is very easy to speak about this, but this is very hard to accomplish. So this is a problem for us. And I think that we have, uh, in a self-critical way, recognize it, draw conclusions, and move forward. OK, we are finishing this conversation in order for some other people to have their Thank word. Jean-Pierre. So Ukrainians have voted on Sunday, 28th of October. On the Monday, 29th of October, you have the results. And on the 30th of October, you get the information from Moscow that the price of natural gas is going to be $430 per th thousand cubic meters. So what do you do? <laughs> okay, and I will start with Vitali. First of all, we have contract which uh, uh, we have all prices and uh, this will be tasked for for our government first point and uh, we hold uh, we have all prices of uh, gas which we work in uh, and after election also what we have to doing it's not uh, it's very difficult question it's everything in politic in life discussion personal contact and defend of interest of the country um, if moscow uh, put prices up we have to defend our uh, interest and uh, discuss about it and fight, uh, find uh, alternative. Is it? Thank you. Natalia, proszę. The most important thing in our country to understand the gas balance. Uh, sheet inside the country. First of all, we have to protect our consumer against uh, this uh, raging price because 20 billion cubic meters we produce. So um, it hasn't been for the sales and uh, super profits for some uh, people from the warm circle of the Ukrainian political elite. So we, uh, uh, can protect um, our people and we understand the political component of the gas price. We have to revisit this contract, look for compromises and uh, rearrange our partnership. Because the market price should drive supreme in Ukraine and there we will weigh all the strength points that we still enjoy to um, uh, put the price down. Uh, push it down. But so uh, we can uh, also com compensate for energy efficiency, energy saving inside Ukraine, because there we are on the very last um, position. Uh, having a very, um, and we have um, a lot of opportunities. Dear
Dear friends, for us, the gas issue is a tragedy. 2005, Ukraine has a contract with Russia until 2013. The price was $50, 50 for 1,000 cubic meters. The government of Timoshenko is breaking this contract. They put in the interface, the intermediary between two state companies, and in 2006, the price was already 130, 130. No, it's not Azarov's government, no. It's Yakonurov's government. Sorry, sorry, Yura Budran, it wasn't her government. Uh, it wasn't your government. Not to blame me in, every, in all the sins, it was Yakonurov's. But there was an intermediary, and it doesn't matter because all the same g go in the same company, in the same group for elections. So, uh, and the Yushchenko president at the same time, all of them. Uh, now the price for gas is more than $500. We are losing ab about $6 billion of this excessive cost. For you to understand what it means for Ukrainians, we can increase pension for every uh, Ukrainian, 13.6 million people, 25% up, right at once. So it means about 300 Ukrainians more of their pension. Your question is just hypothetical because from such a good contract for Russia, Russia will never turn in that contract. There's no any better game conditions for them, you know. No one could, could play better for Russia than them. No one could lose independence of Ukraine better than they did. I don't want you to blame it all on Yekhanurov or you. I'm also a great expert in gas. Everybody knows that. Uh, though uh, I have already expressed my uh, opinion concisely as a person, as a people, as a country, like person, like country, like people, can always uh, find some powers to overcome an obstacle, world wars, and so forth. You know, the technological and technical progress that we can have in local wars, uh, exporters uh, supply obsolete armaments to such countries, make new armaments and go on exporting them. And so I think it seems to me that the um, Prime Minister asked that question from that point of view. I uh, said that we shouldn't go to Russia with our cap in our hand uh, uh, and beg for the price cut. We have to make our business not to be parasites in this situation, but not to hide their cash in the offshore zones, but to uh, do the technical refurbishment. And uh, we are all talking about this, but uh, there's uh, very little motion there because uh, we have sold uh, all the main pipelines uh, for gas and uh, transmission of electric power. The rest of it is on the balance sheet. Nobody is going to do anything about it. So business should work for the country, basically. And I am fully convinced that Russia uh, will um, look um, at it uh, also differently after that. This year we're going to um, take twice as less gas. This is a big loss for Gazprom. Uh, there's some feed for their thinking how to mm, uh, come to terms with the Ukrainian partners uh, for mutual benefits. Uh, from about the 500 for 1,000 cubic meters, it was all initiated by uh, Viktor Yushchenko. 100%. Sure, I am. In April 2005, who was Prime Minister of Ukraine? Yulia Vladimirovna Timoshenko, the President of uh, Russia, on his way from Paris, 
made a stop here to, uh, to meet uh, Viktor Andreevich Yushchenko. Just to visit Yushchenko, stayed with him, his second home and so on, looking around. And uh, and uh, raised the issue of uh, um, cancelling the uh, then effective contract between Russia and Ukraine, where they had fifty dollars, and the transportation price one point seven ruble per one thousand kilometers. So in that situation, we had about 30 billion uh, cubic uh, meters of gas for transportation services, and no more gas. The rest of it uh, would come from Turkmenistan at uh, $45. So the very next day, Putin called me and asked for a meeting in Moscow. He said, uh, Mr. Kuchma, why Yushchenko insisted on uh, uh, canceling the contract? This continuation, I uh, made a sign to the effect, you know, and then they crossed it out with $50. Now we have 500 So congratulations on that, everybody. Okay. And I must scene of the Ukrainian and Russian leaders showing one another everything. I, I didn't know that that's how diplomacy is conducted around here. Okay, we didn't let Arseny speak, so please. The gas issue is not the trade issue. It's a geopolitical issue. Well, let's be frank. And this gas deal is another tool how to press on Ukraine. We can easily get uh, the lower price in case if we join the customs union. So I, I would propose probably the Ukrainian-Russian uh, action plan. Uh, everything yes, except three no's. No customs union, no military bloc, and I would say no Russian language as a state one in my country. So everything, uh, everything else is on the table. We, we can discuss everything else, and, and we shall negotiate. But look at, the, uh, look at the numbers. Ukraine extracts about 20 billion of cubic meters of natural gas. We can easily ask President Kwasniewski, the consumption of natural gas in Poland with the triple high economy rather than Ukrainian one, 14 billion cubic meters. So we actually have enough resources of, of Ukrainian origin. The key factor in this country is entirely and totally inefficient energetic policy. And we are to start and to proceed. The quicker, the better. Russians will never renegotiate this gas deal. And even more, after President Yanukovych ratified this so-called Kharkiv agreement on the deployment of Black Sea Fleet, this agreement shifted from intercorporate agreement into international agreement, because it's in the language of the law. So we, we for today, we can't even sue the Russians. So they missed the chance to do it in 2010, and that's what we have. Okay, our time has run out. I promised Mario one last, last question. Make it really good and really succinct, and then you can all make your closing statements, and then sadly, we're done. Thank you very much. Uh, Sergey, uh, if you allow me, when, when we go to elections, we try to tell our voters what we want for the next four years. Will the party of the regions, following the discussion we had this morning, will it has the courage, allow me to use this word, to uh, tell the voters that if we win the elections, our aspiration is the European Union or our aspiration is the customs union? You know, with pleasure, I have listened to everything at this conference, and I've put down a lot of notes, by the way, and I'm grateful to Victor because I, I see that year after year, the conference is becoming more and more interesting and more relevant for Ukraine because it really uh, talks about the strategy. What to do next is absolutely clear for us. I know that we have a lot of reserves, a lot of uh, 
capacity and we need to just turn it on. And I think the, the more difficult task is to do what Gordon Brown said. How do we improve education and find better technologies? This is the super task for us. In terms of EU, I'm a big fan of, of, of European integration. I think that from all angles, this is the civilization choice for us. And, and no one said anything different in Ukraine so far because we know better standards of democracy are there, better standards of economy is there. And even if EU has some uh, drawbacks now, I think they will come out of that situation even stronger. That's why the direction of Ukraine is towards the European Union. OK, I think at that point we will finish. Uh, we will hear from the cabinet that Ukraine is moving straight forward to Europe. We all agree, right, on this? Thank you, thank you very much. I only believe that these government, they are real supporters of the European integration. They like euros. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, DCFTA, we are to sign DCFTA and we are to ratify DCFTA. This is the key importance for our country. This is the re-election plan. So the opposition fully supports this. Okay, Absolutely. okay, we have to let Natalia and Vitali comment on this unfair otherwise. So European position, please. I hope that in a year we'll also have an opportunity, having won the election and having created the democratic majority to report on um, a, a, our European integration for Ukraine. It's always pleasure to listen to such an optimistic person. We have to sign the association agreement first, and I'm sure that the majority of Ukrainians support European integration. And uh, a lot of foreigners come to uh, Yalta a every year only because they are not indifferent to Ukraine. They feel for Ukraine, they want Ukraine to be part of European community, economically and politically, and uh, on the living standards as well. Thank you, thank you very much.